Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today I'd like to give you a multiplayer overview of what the Axis should be doing in Hearts of Iron 4. I am in the HMM Dev mod, so go check that out for your Hearts of Iron 4 multiplayer gaming experience. You can also use L Wolf. The strategies are not going to be that different. So buckle up your seatbelts and let's get into this. Uh, first off, basic strategy uh, for Germany. So Germany is going to be the leader of the Axis and should be guiding all the Axis uh, over here in Europe. Uh, Japan is kind of doing their own thing. Yes, they're in the Axis, but you can do a little bit of trading back and forth, uh, things like that and you can get trade backs. Um, so Germany will be trading resources uh, in this mod, the HMM mod. Basically, the uh, there's a trade back policy that you don't have to really worry about trade until Danziger War. But once Danziger War, World War II starts, essentially, you need to manage trade with your allies so that if Germany is, say, trading... Uh, steel from Italy and say they get eight steel from Italy, Italy needs to give Germany uh, eight sieves back by trading eight sieves of something with Germany in order to make sure that all the civilian factories are on Germany. So that's the basic uh, collaboration that you're doing uh, with the Axis or the allies in multiplayer after war starts. Now, more complex uh, strategy, Germany should be taking a look at, you know, kind of the UK and the USSR. And again, they're leading the show. They should be determining what type of tank USSR is making, and they should be planning their research around it, surrounding that. Uh, if USSR is going heavy tank, then... Germany probably wants to make a tank with the medium gun. Uh, if USSR is going medium or light tank, you could do the rapid fire gun. Uh, are you going to do a fixed superstructure if Germany's go or if USSR is going light tank? Uh, if, G if USSR is going heavy tank, are you going to do a uh, three man turret like things like that? Germany's going to have to determine and you can go around right clicking and then clicking on Intel ledger. Of course, if you have a spy in that country, you the Intel that you receive uh, will be better depending on how strong your Intel network is. Uh, so you need to be clicking on UK, making sure you know, that they're not building uh, too many fighters and that you're staying ahead of them in fighter production. And basically, Germany's first task is to ramp Fighter 2 production. They will be licensing Fighter 2 from Italy. And uh, Italy and Romania will be building Fighter 2 in Fighter 3. Once they get the license at around... Late 37 for Fighter 2, uh, they're going to have to ramp production of Fighter 2 until they get about 120. So pretend this is Fighter 2. You need to keep an eye on UK. As soon as you get Fighter 2, you need to put that in production and start ramping that up until you get around 120. Now that's going to vary on what you see in the in UK's Intel ledger. If UK is way behind, you could potentially keep mills on uh, TAC Bomber. You should be building TAC Bomber from the start since this gives you the greatest value. But that's for another video. Uh, other things that you should be doing as Germany, you should be obviously, like I said, building the tank. You should be looking at France, what type of build. Excuse me, is France going with? Do I have to deal with heavy tanks? Uh, you could also collaborate with like Finland or Bulgaria to get mech from Finland or Bulgaria. Uh, I don't think that it's necessary to get mech by France in North Africa, but if you do, uh, it is better because mech adds more hardness to your tank divisions. Just a quick aside on what tank divisions 
you should be building you should be building uh 45 width for north africa and 42 width for france and ussr the templates are free in hmm mod so as you can see there's zero cost to manipulating those templates so that's enough about germany that's what should be what Germany should be doing. All the other members of the Axis besides Japan should be taking Germany's lead and should be listening to Germany and, uh, and trying to collaborate with an overall strategy. Italy is a fun nation to play. They're gonna be Germany's biggest support nation. Italy's gonna be focusing on Navy. They're gonna be focusing on infantry to win North Africa. And then after North Africa is taken out, they're gonna be making the D-Day wall in uh, the west of Europe here and the west of Italy. They should have a strong Navy. They should be uh, upgrading their navy to heavy cruisers and doing light attack with heavy cruisers italy should also be doing fighter two in fighter three they get upgrades to building uh, light aircraft from their focus tree uh, with air innovations one and two they should also be researching nav two and building nav two with naval air effort uh, from that focus, uh, I have a guide on Italy that I just came out with, so you can reference that guide of how to play Italy. But the Axis is main naval powerhouse, and Italy needs to control the Mediterranean and ideally kick the United Kingdom out of G Gibraltar and Suez and control the Mediterranean with Romania's help. Which moves on to Romania. Romania is able to get upgrades from their focus tree to fighter research. They should also get... Uh, Marines so that they can help with the securing the Pripyat marshes in Barbarossa as well as amphibious landings here in the Mediterranean uh, namely Malta Gibraltar and Cyprus so their main work is going to be done kicking the UK and the allies out of the Mediterranean and then transitioning to perhaps a mech build, but a build that will do well in the marshes to help cross rivers and kick uh, the USSR out of the marshes. The other thing that Romania will be doing is supplying the Axis with oil. So they are going to be somehow collaborating in making sure that they have oil processing tech in order to give oil to the Axis and to give the, the Fighter 2, II, Fighter 3, producing a little bit of those and making their Marines. Uh, Hungary is going to be the AC for the Axis. That's the air controller. And Hungary is going to be... What are the linchpins of the Axis? Because green air is so important to make the tanks move fast and to get attack bonuses for the Axis. So Hungary needs to be the air controller. In other words, the Axis will be donating all their air to Hungary. And then they, from Focus Tree, they will have to get... Um, cast two and they will need to produce cast two and eventually transition their production into cast three they will need to have an intel agency and get collabs on poland and then germany will eventually donate uh part of poland to hungary so that hungary has enough manpower and production in order to get enough manpower to be ac so that is one of the bottlenecks hungary needs oil and hungary needs manpower uh from uh poland and they need oil from romania in order to uh be ac and uh all the rest of the access needs to donate their air power to hungary all right moving on if you have a Bulgaria, it would be nice. It's Bulgaria's job to get cores on Greece and Macedonia, take over those states and perhaps provide equipment to the rest of the Axis in the form of guns, 
support equipment and to make uh, mechanized forces. The one thing that you do not want to do as Bulgaria is go Bulgarian autarky. Bulgarian autarky will take away all the resources uh, that you're going to need, that the Axis is going to need. So just go whatever focus tree build uh, that you can to get mech and of uh, and the most resources and cores on the territories that that I told you about Macedonia, um, Pirat and Thrace. And largely your uh, supporting role, you can participate in Barb with your mechanized forces and you can defend D-Day and you could do a bunch of stuff uh, to to help. Uh, with utility for the Axis. All right, moving on to Spain. Spain's job is to win the Spanish Civil War, as well as perhaps build tank forces for the Axis that can participate in Barbarossa. And Spain is playing their own mini game with the Spanish Civil War. They can also donate to the Axis. And early on, the Axis can donate their fighters to Spain to help with the Spanish Civil War. They can also donate whatever guns uh, that they have left over to winning the Spanish Civil War. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, Spain is more utility for the Axis and can play an instrumental role in Barb as another uh, country to micro tanks and perhaps make encirclements. So that's a really big role that Spain has. And that's largely the main players of the Axis. We're not going to go over a Japan guide, but Japan should get uh, rid of China by the end of 1938. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> by the beginning of 38 ideally but sometime within 38 would be nice uh, if you're really good you could get rid of china in early 37 as japan and they should secure resources for the axis in southeast asia over here as well as defend against the british raj and the united states um, so japan's kind of doing their own thing but securing resources for the axis uh, other nations that are playable are finland Finland can get mech for uh, Germany, but other than that, largely a minor nation, low impact nation. Um, but that's the overview of all the major nations. Uh, one last thing, Italy should be getting Yugoslavia in 1938 and should be going total mob uh, with the help of Hungary and Romania. And at that time, Hungary and Romania should be make trades together should make lend lease together and it's crucial that italy and romania give all their airplanes to hungary and maintain a trade with hungary so that they can feed hungary uh fighter two fighter three whatever is needed uh and that trade will continue in between wars and will be there when germany starts world war ii very important point uh for the axis um but yeah, that's it. That's my basic overview of multiplayer uh, access. And if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to add on to this guide, please post them down below. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We have channel membership where I have a lot of videos that only my members can access. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one, guys.